When you get a gaming PC, you will probably have your RAM, motherboard, CPU, case, but most importantly, you'll have your graphics card. But graphics cards can be expensive. So in this video, we will see if we can play games with no dedicated graphics card by playing on the integrated graphics of the CPU. We will first start with the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G, which is an AMD APU, so has a pretty decent iGPU inside. It's the most powerful APU you can currently get, so hopefully we can play some games with good FPS at 1080p. The second CPU is the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, which has integrated graphics, but this isn't the type of graphics you would even think of gaming on. Both these CPUs and the keyboard I'll be using in the video come from AliExpress. AliExpress's back to school blowout has started and you can enjoy many products with up to 80% discount so start shopping now. We have some exclusive discount codes for use on AliExpress for a limited time and while stocks last applicable on selected items. The codes are specs5 for £5 off £30, specs15 for £15 off £80 and specs28 for £28 off £140. It also works on all these other currencies on screen. Furthermore, you can get up to 10% cash back by joining my team. You can earn more points by completing daily tasks such as signing in, browsing and placing orders. The higher the team points, the more cash back you'll get. So definitely come and check it out. To join my team, you can click on the link in the description, search GPU specs in the AliExpress search bar or just scan the code on your screen right now. So in the box of our AliExpress Ryzen 7 8700G, we have our cooler with the pre-applied thermal paste and our CPU in the tray. The Ryzen 7 8700G has 8 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 4.2 GHz, 8 MB of level 2 cache with 16 MB of level 3 cache, a TDP of 65 watts, and of course our AMD Radeon 780M graphics which we are going to be using to game on, so we can connect the Ryzen 7 8700G to our PC. And we are going to first use Corsair 6000 MHz DDR5 memory in dual channel. AMD APUs work much better with faster memory of larger size. And also by using dual channel memory we can increase our bandwidth so that AMD APU can work a lot better as the APU needs to access the RAM to use this video memory. To complete our graphics cardless setup we have the Orla F75 gaming keyboard and I'm going to use it to play all the games on. Now starting up our PC we want to make sure that AMD Expo is on so our RAM is clocked at the correct speed. In Task Manager we can see our CPU, RAM which is 32GB clocked at 6000MHz and our Radeon 780M GPU is right there. GPU-Z and AMD software also shows us our 780M integrated graphics. Geekbench's GPU benchmark gave us 34,183 which is pretty high considering we have no graphics card in our system. In 3D Mark we also get a surprisingly good graphics score of 3128. Gaming therefore shouldn't be too bad. And sure enough, Forza Horizon 5 at medium settings 1080p achieves 89 FPS on average which is really really good. I could even turn the settings up to the ultra preset and we were still getting 51.3 FPS with no graphics card. However there was the occasional stuttering as shown by the 1% low being at 21.1 FPS but mostly it was very very smooth. However in slightly harder to run games like Cyberpunk, we could only play at low settings 1080p with no resolution scaling. We got 43.2 FPS on average, so we may be able to turn up the settings slightly but then we made it below 30 FPS. The game was pretty smooth throughout with a 1% low of 31.4 and a 0.1% low of 23.2 FPS. Turning on AMD resolution scaling made the game more playable with 55.4 FPS on average, which is much better and we could probably turn up the game settings here. You can run older games like GTA 5 at 1080p with ultra settings and still get 45.8 FPS on average. If we turn down the settings slightly we could easily average well over 60 FPS. It just depends on if you'd rather have lower FPS and higher quality or higher FPS and lower quality. The game was super smooth throughout and did dip below 36 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider could be played at the highest preset 1080p with 37.4 FPS on average and that's pretty good considering this is the highest settings. You could turn these settings down if you wanted to and get about 60 FPS. Resident Evil 3 usually runs pretty well on most hardware so here at high settings we are able to get 58.5 FPS on average basically 60 FPS let's call it. Esports titles like CS2 work great, here I have the game on low to get more FPS which is usually how I play and we can get 173.3 FPS on average. There was a bit of stuttering with the 1% and 0.1% low being at 84.1 and 22.1 FPS but overall it was pretty decent. So we can definitely play games well on the 8700G but remember before I said about the RAM speed? Well now I'm going to use two sticks of 6400 MHz RAM to see if there's any difference in performance. It may be unlikely though with just 400 MHz difference. In Forza, at the same settings, we actually got lower at 50.3 FPS instead of 51.3, but it's probably within the margin of error. 
Basically, it's way too small to notice any difference here. Cyberpunk, we did actually get 4.8 FPS higher, which is about 10%, so not too bad. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider had such a small increase that it would be hard to notice any difference. GTA 5 was also higher, but also had a very small increase. So it looks like you can increase the FPS with faster memory, although really we need a bigger increase in RAM speed to test it. Gaming on the 8700G's integrated graphics is actually pretty good and surprised me at how capable it is. However, this is an AMD APU, so what if we were to play games on the integrated graphics on a CPU which was designed to be used with a dedicated graphics card? Well, here we have the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. This is a great CPU for gaming, as long as you have a dedicated graphics card. The integrated graphics in this CPU are the types of graphics you would probably use to test and troubleshoot your PC, definitely not the kind you would plan to play games on. For this CPU, we have just the CPU in the tray with no box to call it, as it's a tray CPU. I mean, there's no cooler included with any of the 7800X3Ds anyway, because they expect you to have and want to use your own CPU cooler. It definitely shows what types of people this CPU is aimed at, which are more of the enthusiasts that probably have their own cooling solution, and probably their own dedicated graphics cards. This CPU also, like the 8700G, has 8 cores and 16 threads. It also has a 4.2GHz clock speed, but the cache is where it starts to differ. It has 8MB of level 2 cache, but being an X3D processor, we have a huge 96MB of level 3 cache. The TDP is almost double at 120 watts, and our graphics are just the standard Radeon graphics. Let's plug this CPU into our PC using the faster 6400 MHz memory. And we can see in GPUZ, Task Manager, and AMD software that we have AMD Radeon graphics and our CPU installed. In the Geekbench GPU benchmark, we get 6,352, which is not that great, but can be expected from this CPU. 3D Mark, we got a GPU score of 752, which is a lot less than the 8700G. But in gaming, the performance varies a lot by game to game. Forza works surprisingly well on less powerful hardware, and it's no different here. We can play at low settings 1080p with 33.8 FPS on average. I mean it's nowhere near as good as the 8700G, but it is still a lot better than I thought it would be. The integrated graphics struggle a lot with Cyberpunk at low settings 1080p, it got just 15.9 FPS, but it's not like the 8700G performed amazingly here either, it's a very hard game to run. Older games like GTA 5 work pretty well with 43.8 FPS at normal settings 1080p, and it was very smooth throughout because it didn't drop below 35 FPS. It's honestly a lot better than I thought it would be. And it was quite playable. Shadow of the Tomb Raider I tried at medium settings, but it only had like 10 FPS, so I put it onto the lowest settings at 1080p, and it still wasn't great with just 21.6 FPS on average. CS2 at low settings 1080p was decent enough at 50 FPS, although realistically, for a first person shooter, I would need more like 100 FPS. So I guess for a casual player, it would be fine, but if you're like anyone on CS matchmaking or face it, you would probably end up raging. Resident Evil 3 was almost as bad as Cyberpunk at medium settings with just 17.4 FPS. Turning it down to the lower settings, we almost had 30 FPS at 28.1 FPS on average. Not ideal, but I would still say it's pretty playable. Overall, gaming on integrated graphics is actually not that bad. For the Ryzen 7 8700G, as long as you have decently fast enough memory in dual channel, you can get some really good gaming performance. For the other CPUs, which have just basic integrated graphics like our Ryzen 7 7800X3D, you can actually still play some games on it without a graphics card. Some games will be too intensive for the integrated graphics, and you may have to turn down the settings to low, but you can actually play the games. It's a lot better than I expected, and if you are waiting to buy a graphics card or saving up for a better one, I think you could use the integrated graphics of the Ryzen 7 7800X3D temporarily. Both these CPUs from AliExpress work great and have no problems, so as always the links to all the products including the all F75 gaming keyboard I was using in this video are in the description. Be sure to check out the sale and use the coupons before they expire. Thanks for watching.